Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, I want to show you guys how to create a serverless URL shortener service using AWS. So we'll be using a couple of AWS services in this video and it's also the purpose that it's sort of a tutorial on how to use these services. So we'll be using uh, the AWS Amazon API Gateway, which is a service used to create uh, RESTful APIs and it's usually used, it's used a lot in, in, in serverless architectures. Uh, we'll be using AWS Lambda, uh, which is a serverless compute option on AWS and essentially just what you do is you upload a code file file and then uh, based on a trigger or, or based on a user request uh, that particular function or code will be executed uh, so it's basically pay uh, pay on demand so it doesn't run continuously uh, the server but it only runs whenever it's invoked uh, and then we will be using Amazon uh, DynamoDB which is a serverless key value uh, stored database uh, and finally also Amazon S3 uh, which is a simple um, storage service so the way this works is that the user is this um, is able to input the long URL he or she wishes to shorten and uh, is then able to click on the shorten URL button which will generate the shortened URL so the way this web page is served is actually through uh, it's a static HTML file that is served through uh, through s3 um, so there's a way to do this in s3 and so the user goes through Amazon API gateway and then just issues a get request on the URL which is uh, this thing here and once that's been done the user is served the web page the user can then click on shorten URL which will cause a, uh, a post request to be issued to, to the API gateway uh, at, the, at the create endpoint. The API gateway is then responsible for routing this request to, to AWS Lambda. The Lambda function is then responsible for actually creating uh, the shortened URL. This is done by, by passing the long URL through a hash function, which shortens the URL and we take the first seven characters as the shortened URL. Once this has been done, the Lambda stores this as a, uh, as a pair. So the shortened URL is the key and the long URL is the value in Amazon DynamoDB. And, uh, and once that has been done, the user is then, uh, uh, this then returns the shortened URL to the user, which the user can then click in order to access uh, the actual website. And this is then, so this whole thing is actually shortened to just these seven characters that you see here. And this is done through a, so the user uh, just uh, issues a, a get request to the endpoint slash uh, with, with, the, with the shortened URL. Uh, in this case, it would just be this part here. And this is then routed by, a, by API gateway to the Lambda function, which retrieves the mapping and gets the long URL from the mapping and then performs a HTTP redirection, which redirects the user to the actual website. So to actually spin up the AWS services, I use something called CDK, which is also called, uh, also known as infrastructure as code. I've made a previous video on CDK and ISC um, and also given reasons why it's important. Uh, you can watch that if you're interested, but in general, um, CDK and ISC enable us to uh, to package our uh, our infrastructure as code, which means it's easy to make changes to it. It's easy to have an audit trail. Um, you can also commit it to version control and, um, and you can just spin up stacks very quickly and also destroy them very quickly. And you don't have to go around in the AWS console and click on different services and, and also uh, when you when you delete a service you don't need to remember which services you created you can just delete everything at once um, through the terminal so I'll just go through the CDK code here uh, it's in the CDK um, CDK and CDK directory under CDK stack which defines the services that we use uh, so firstly we create an S3 bucket here and this is to store, uh, to actually uh, host the static website file. Um, so we give the website index document, index.html, uh, and we ensure public root access is true. Uh, there are also some additional accesses here that we need to just set to false to ensure it's publicly accessible. Uh, once that's been done, we need to upload the file to the S3 bucket, and we do this using the S3 deployment bucket deployment uh, package. And here we just give the source asset to be everything uh, to be the static folder, uh, which contains actually uh, uh, the, the HTML file here. Um, and also the, the destination bucket, which is the bucket that we created earlier. So once this has been done, we create the Lambda function uh, where we just give the runtime as well as the handler. Uh, the handler is the name of the of the actual uh, of the method um, in the in the code uh, that we wish to execute. Uh, so in this case, handler.handler .handler would be the name of the file along with the name of this function. Um, so once that's been done, we give uh, uh, also uh, specify that the source code lives in this lambda directory, which is this directory here, um, with handler.py being the actual uh, file, uh, the actual code file which contains the code. 
Uh, next, we create an API gateway. Here, we create a REST API. And there are other, also others you can create. You can also create a Lambda API, uh, which is in cases where the backend is only Lambda functions. But in this case, since we also have the S3 as a backend, uh, we use the REST API. And we set deploy to true, which ensures that you know it's accessible the moment that we deploy the stack. Um, and this just ensures we don't have to go through any manual steps in the console uh, once we once we deploy the stack from the terminal. Uh, next, we add a method to root, uh, which means that we just, uh, which is just uh, essentially the the URL of the of the gateway without without anything uh, added to it. Uh, so this will just be the website. So so this should essentially serve uh, the 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 static uh, file from S3. So for that we use an HTTP integration. Again, there are many other integrations you can integrate to AWS. You can integrate to various AWS services. Uh, it could be a Lambda or it could also be some other AWS. There are so many AWS services you can link it to any of those if you want something else to happen uh, or when 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 a person uh, accesses um, sort of the root. Uh, so we use HTTP integration with the URL, which is the actual uh, URL of the uh, of the file that we have of the index.html file, uh, and we and we just specify that this is a GET request. Um, just one thing here: this this region should not be hard coded in practice. It should be something that's retrieved programmatically. Uh, there are ways to do this, um, yeah. But for this, for the purposes of this of this code, I just I just hard coded it here. Uh, next, we create two additional endpoints. One is the create endpoint, which is a post uh, method uh, with with a lambda as the as the backend. The second is the actual uh, so so the so so the get uh, with the with the user specifies um, the short URL. So that would be slash the root dot add resource or so slash and then the short URL, uh, which would just be sent along with that. Um, and this also uh, would direct this request essentially to the lambda function. So these two requests will be. Uh, forward it to the Lambda function, uh, whereas the, the, the root would just uh, serve the static website. Uh, next, we create the DynamoDB table. Um, and here again, we use we specify the partition key. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but partition key is the same as uh, essentially as a primary key, which enables us to actually run queries on. Uh, so we just specify here that this would be the, the short URL and that it's a string. Uh, and next we set our removal policy of destroy, which ensures that whenever we kill, uh, whenever we destroy the stack, uh, that the, the database also gets destroyed and we don't have any, you know, any costs uh, or we don't sort of have any, any, any costs if we, if we forget to destroy it afterwards. Uh, in, in production environment, this should probably, this should be omitted. Uh, finally, we need to also give access. Uh, so the table needs to, uh, so the Lambda function needs to uh, have permissions uh, to read and write data from the DynamoDB table. And for that, we use the grant read write data function on the, on the Dynamo table uh, to, to the Lambda function. So I'll just go through the Lambda code quickly. So we're using Proto3 to interface with the DynamoDB table. And this uh, handler function is the function that's used for Lambda code uh, with event and context as two required parameters. If the event has a body, we assume it's a post request. Otherwise, we assume it's a get request. And we simply retrieve the, the URL from the body, the long URL. And then we use MD5 to hash it and obtain the short URL. Uh, and what we do is we take the first uh, seven characters of the, of the hash as the short URL, and then we check whether it exists in the database, uh, but with a database with a table dot get item, uh, and then we do a try catch on on the actual item value, um, and if uh, and, and if that does not exist, uh, it means that there is a uh, uh, a key error, and it means that it has not been stored previously, and so therefore we simply store uh, that URL. Um, if it if it um, if uh, if it does exist, uh, we we simply do. Uh, if it does ex if it does exist, it means that's uh, that there's a a, uh, a hash collision, and so we we continue in the loop, uh, and then we just add an additional character and keep doing this until uh, we find a value that's unique. Uh, once all this has been done, we simply put uh, in the database the mapping from the short URL to the long URL, and return with a status code of two hundred and a body which includes uh, the URL. It's important here to actually wrap this in the json.dump string, otherwise there are the, get, uh, the Lambda gets some, some weird errors. Um, yeah. So if that's not, yeah, so the other option is that it's a get request, which is when the user actually inputs the short URL to the service. Uh, in this case, we simply retrieve um, the item from the table using the short URL as the key uh, to retrieve the long URL, and then we do a, HTTP 302 uh, return response, 
giving the location as the header, which specifies which URL the, URL sh uh, the user should be redirected to. Um, and this then is responsible for that. Um, and that's basically it. That's the Lambda code. And what we can, so in order to deploy the stack, you can just run CDK deploy. I've already done this many times. You can run CDK deploy, and this will then begin deploying the whole stack. And if you make any changes to the CDK stack code, or if you make changes to any of this code, the um, uh, the stack will be redeployed every time with just these changes, and it would just update sort of the services that use uh, these uh, this respective code. So you can also go to so you can log into your console in order to uh, to, to look into things. So you have you know the API gateway. If you go to APIs, you'll see that you have an API here, and then you can see sort of um, sort of get a more visual representation of the different endpoints you have created. You can also go to CloudFormation and then look at the stack that you have here along with the resources that have been created and you can poke around here. If you're looking to get the, yeah, so the API gateway endpoint, so what you use basically to, to access the actual website, this one is actually here in the outputs under, under stack, uh, this right here. So uh, yeah, so there, so there are you can you, you can poke around in the console and see what's actually been created. And uh, the neat thing here is that if you're when you're done uh, playing around with this, done testing it and all that, you can either delete it from here, um, or, or you can also run CDK destroy, which should delete everything, and it ensures you know that there aren't any dangling services, and ensures that you know you won't get an AWS bill uh, five six months down the line uh, for something. Uh, that's still, you know, sort of running there that you forgot to delete. So we have all of this packaged, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, so this concludes this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you uh, you got a better understanding, a clear idea of, um, of how these different services are used and also a quick rundown of the code. Um, and I hope you got a gist of it.